Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line. We're going to start today's episode off with a pretty disturbing story from the Daily Mail. And as you can see, America's first elected trans lawmaker has been arrested and charged with stomach churning, disgusting child abuse material. Now, uh, as you can tell, they're obviously a Democrat. First transgender lawmaker would have to be a Democrat. And this just goes to show that all these people getting up in arms about uh, the sound of freedom and saying that the movie is a hoax and is a lie, is a QAnon conspiracy, and basically just outing it as right-wing nut job conspiracy theories. Proven wrong yet again. Uh, now, this story is from July this year, so it's obviously pr uh, pretty fresh and still getting updated on it now, but we'll get into this story from the Daily Mail. America's first elected trans lawmaker is charged with stomach-churning child porn offences after daycare worker girlfriend sent naked photos of toddlers in her care. Stacey Marie Lawton, 39, former Democrat representative, has been charged with aiding and abetting a sexual exploitation of children. Lawton is accused of sharing explicit and sickening fantasies with ex-girlfriend Lindsay Groves. Groves has been charged with taking images of nude three to five-year-old children while working at a daycare. America's first ever elected transgender lawmaker has been charged with horrific child sex offences after allegedly getting her daycare worker to send her explicit photos of toddlers in her care. Stacey Marie Lawton, 39, a former Democrat representative, could face up to 30 years jail after being charged with aiding and abetting in sexual exploitation of children. The former New Hampshire state representative was arrested after daycare worker Lindsay Groves, 38, was accused of taking explicit photographs of children aged between 3 to 5 years old in Tingsboro, Massachusetts. Grove has reportedly in a relationship with Lawton and the two had discussed the sexual photographs of children more than 10,000 images uh, so in more than 10,000 messages, sorry. The Department of Justice document shows several sickening conversations between the pair who fantasize about sexually assaulting young children. Their alleged conversations were detailed and full in changing, uh, charging documents, but are too horrific to reproduce. And as you can see, these two are obviously uh, part of the Rainbow Mafia. Trans people uh, getting into aid, uh, child care. And uh, it makes you wonder what their uh, motives are if any of them get into childcare after these stories keep popping up, because they just keep popping up. I uh, recently did a story, I think it was in Melbourne, of a gay couple teachers. Uh, they were doing the, pretty much the same thing. Uh, they weren't just reproducing images, they were actually involved in sexual, uh, sexual things with the children at the daycare. And that's happening here in Australia. The former couple shared warped fantasies about sexual acts that they wanted to perform on the children, discussed them in graphic detail. It is alleged, according to the documents, Lawton told Groves to touch a child's genitals so she could take a picture and send it to her for sexual gratification. She allegedly used natural bathroom breaks uh, for the children, such as a routine diaper pull-up changes prior to a nappy time, nap time, to take multiple photos of prepubescent children in a private bathroom. These people need to be... Uh, I, I can't say it on here, obviously, uh, but you know what needs to happen to these people. These people are beyond jail. Jail cannot fix them. No account, of, uh, no amount of medication can fix them. No, re there's no such thing as rehabilitation for these kind of people. And um, there's a lot of wood chipper memes that come to mind when you're thinking about these kind of people. But nothing will get done. They'll go to jail for a short period of time. In the states, it might be a bit more harsh, but in Australia. This kind of thing happens here. They get let out quite regularly and they reoffend constantly. This is the highest recidivism rate of any crime that I know of, basically. And they can't be cured. There's only one way to cure them. And we all know how to cure them. But uh, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that for uh, people like this. And if we're not going to do it for people like this, then we won't do it for anyone else. These people are getting... Uh, getting protected by the government, they're getting protected by social media platforms, they're getting protected by law, they're getting protected by their own flag and their own LGBT propagandist, uh, whatever you want to call it, mafia. 
they hide behind that and they disrespect and they belittle other people in that demographic and they're in the gay bi trans whatever demographic it is and they hide behind them and use them as a scapegoat and they're protected by that rainbow flag and they only make that whole demographic look worse and people like gays against groomers are the only people standing out against these kind of people they're the only thing that's out there to stop them people like um I forget her name from Gays Against Groomers, but you can go and follow them on Twitter. They actually oust people like this. They find people like this. They stop people like this. They go and they get attacked viciously for it. And they're called homophobic, all names under the sun, racist, do you believe it? But um, they're the only people in that demographic that are actually standing up for children and stopping grooming and stopping things like this happening. Groves, a former employee at Creative Minds Early Learning Center, was charged last month with sexual exploitation of children and distribution of child pornography. She is accused of taking naked pictures of three to five-year-old children, disseminating them according to the charging documents. The charge of sexual exploitation of children could lead up to a 30 years of prison. Nashua Police Department get an investigation into the allegations after receiving an anonymous tip-off. These people all look the same, don't they? They always look like that. Lawton was born a man and elected in 2012 but was in, unable to serve after he criminal past emerged that he was, she was sentenced to 10 years probation stemming from 2008 felony conviction of credit card fraud. State laws prohibited convicted felons from holding office until the final discharge of the sentence. In 2012, she was elected along with two Democrats, David Cole and Mary Gorman, to represent the Hillsborough 31 district. The three all received more votes than both Republican challenges, Elizabeth Van Tua and Richard Hitmiller. She was arrested for domestic violence, criminal mischief in 2002, and also had a sexual charge against a woman in 2003. Constant, constantly up to no good, constantly getting charged with crimes. It's cr criminal mischief, domestic violence, a sexual assault charge, and they're still appointed a Democrat lawmaker. 2015, she was arrested for making a bomb threat against Southern New Hampshire Medical Center. In 2021, she was arrested once again for misusing the state's 911 texting system. Despite a criminal past, Lawton still ran for a second term in 2022 and was elected to represent Nashua in New Hampshire. She was elected to represent the Hillsborough 3 district along with the Democrats, Coat and Fred Davis. Republican juiced Bullmaster lost, earning one of these seats by about 100 votes. However, once again, she was unable to take office, having been jailed on stalking charges and was accused of stalking Groves. Lawton has blamed her past criminal behaviour on mental illness, untreated conditions. She resigned to her house seat, uh, house seat in 2022 and posted a video on social media about her issues. As of today, I'm no longer a state representative, which is very disappointing, but I'm going to come back to it. Lawton said, according to the New Hampshire Union leader, I will be attending mental health court and getting some more uh, counselling, trying to get my life back on track. I'm not perfect. Even in the future, I still won't be perfect, but I'll be a better version of myself and better than able to handle situations. That may come my way. In two years, the next state election, I will run for state representative again. It's always the same friggin' thing. These people, Democrats, <laughs> it's like they're attracted to it. It's like it's almost like it's some sort of big criminal pedophilic cabal. I'm sure that someone's kind of made those connotations before. I think Alex Jones might point that out once or twice. But anyone in the Democratic Party always seems to have these disgusting, horrendous, satanic issues in their closet. It's always got something to do with children. It's always got something to do with sexual, disgusting, lewd behavior. Stalk this person was stalking, making bomb threats. It's obviously mentally unhinged. And people vote them in just because they have a D next to their name. It's insanity. It's like, what, do you not look at who you're voting for? Or do you just go out and vote just because they have a D or an R against their name? You literally voted a pedophile with multiple charges against them for stalking, harassment, and bomb threats and all sorts of other things. And you vote them in, into power. And then they use their position of power to push their agenda. And their agenda is mutilating, grooming, and touching children. And I guarantee you they're not the only one. And it 
it just seems every time this comes out, it's always a Democrat. Why am I not surprised? And people touting that the sound of freedom is fake and it's a QAnon conspiracy theory. When this stuff happens every single day and these people are caught and then get away with it constantly. How do you say that child trafficking is and child exploitation is fake news or propaganda from the right when this happens every single day? Are you mentally unhinged? And the people who hide these people, people who defend them, people who vote for them, people who protect them, people who welcome them into their little communities and little uh, multi-letter flag-waving uh, committees and things like that, they are part of the problem. They are pedophiles themselves. If they are not, then they are helping and they are actively helping pedophiles. It is disgusting. Groomers like this, we all know where they need to go. We all know what needs to happen to them, but we can't say it here on YouTube. It's insane. What do you guys think? Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.